Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Houston, Texas. It's time for Houston Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Hello, Houston. Trisha Stutzel here bringing you another episode of Houston Business Radio Serving the Community series. I am very excited to have a guest back on the show. We spoke just about a year ago, and she's got a lot going on with her organization. I'd love to introduce you to Jamila Robinson, who is the founder, one of the founders of Missing Pieces Support Group. Jamila, welcome to the show. Thank you, Trisha, for having me back. And I can't believe it's already been a year, but, you know, time flies. That's right. Having fun. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, and October is a very special month for your organization. So first, I would love for you to introduce yourself. Uh, Tell us a little bit about you and then how you got involved in the organization and where this organization is going this year, because you've got some really exciting events coming up. Sure. Thanks. Um. So about me, I have a family. Uh, I married my college sweetheart uh, almost 14 years ago as of two days from now. And um, we have a 10-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. In between those two wonderful, adorable kids, I experienced a recurrent miscarriage back in 2018. Um, at that time, I was an entrepreneur, still am an entrepreneur, uh, that owns a, a marketing firm that now specializes in helping nonprofits after becoming a nonprofit leader. And um, when it happened, the first time it was very traumatic. Like, I'd heard of miscarriage, but nobody really knows what it is until you go through it. Um, so my experience was traumatic because... Well, you know, not, not only after you hear your baby no longer has a heartbeat, do you have to figure out what to do next? But um, I had to be rushed to the emergency room uh, because of so much fluid loss. And so, um, you know, I tried to process those emotions, but then I put my head back down and went to work. Uh, several months later, though, we found ourselves pregnant again. Mm. And uh, at seven weeks, lost that, that pregnancy. Uh, that second pregnancy spiraled me into depression, Trisha. And, um, you know, there was nothing really uh, tangible that was able to to help me uh, from a, a mindset experience. Um, I was just down and disappointed and uh, felt helpless. Um, fortunately, I was able to connect with a pregnancy loss support group resource through those plays. They are um, local here in Houston, Texas, near uh, NRG, and they support all types of grief. Um, But I'm so thankful that they had one specifically for pregnancy loss because in that support group, I was able to find a safe space with other women who had gone through something uh, similar to to my pregnancy loss experience. And we found so much commonality in our stories that it created this unique and quick bond where we were able to just be transparent and share without people stepping on our feelings or feeling triggered because, um, you know, people that go through this or don't encounter pregnancy loss um, often sometimes say things that could could cause someone who is going through it to spiral. So um, fast forward a year from that seven-week experience, Still meeting with those several of those ladies in the support group that I had met because we were friends now. And, uh, you know, we watched each other get pregnant again and watched each other's kids grow, all of the things. And um, I reached back out and said, hey, I want to um, do something to support this um, community we found ourselves in because of pregnancy loss. Um, We were all very aware of how little and scarce resources there were uh, to help with with grief and uh, life after suffering a loss like this. And um, so that that resonated with several of the ladies. Um, And two of them said yes to the opportunity. And I connected with a third um, of our founding members um, through... um, my church, who I knew had had a stillborn, 
and she was in the very late st- stages of her pregnancy, about to have a, a baby shower, and um, that lost the baby. Um, and she said yes to the call as well. So back in 2021, we were able to um, connect with a nonprofit attorney who helped us file the right paperwork to become a nonprofit. Uh, and uh, we work with the name Missing Pieces Support Group uh, because there is a, a small missing piece when, when you go through a loss like this. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. And I could I could on forever, but what, what was the other question that you asked or tied to that? It's okay. I appreciate you sharing that story and I, it's so meaningful. And I remember when we had uh, had you on last year, there were so many people that reached out to me that said, thank you for having this show on. And um, I know that it will touch others. And I appreciate that you built this community or this family of women and you were able to found Missing Pieces Support Group, which is out there. And so, by the way, if anyone's listening and you haven't um and you don't know Jamila and you don't know anything about this particular organization, you can find it online at missingpiecessupportgroup.org and look for more information out there. So Jamila, I would like to talk about the events that you have coming up because those are going to be happening in October and October happens to be a very special month as well. So tell us about that. Yes, October is our month for pregnancy loss. Uh, it happens to be pregnancy loss and infant uh, pregnancy and infant loss awareness month, and so we have um, some community related events to um, you know not only bring in those who have encountered pregnancy loss so that they do see visual, visual support of those who have gone through it and um, have navigated that grief journey, but uh, also an event that will bring in um, supporters of a community that have not gone through it, but can empathize and want to show their support. So the first event that we have in October is Sunday, October 13th uh, at at 6.30 p.m. at Bell Park. We will be hosting a Wave of Light event. Wave of Light is a national holiday that is essentially a candlelight vigil. Uh, it gives those who have encountered pregnancy loss to uh, collectively light a candle in a memoriam of that pregnancy loss. And so um, last year, we uh, collaborated with two uh, or partnered with two other uh, charities in the, the baby loss uh, community, Little Angel Network and the Harmony Grace Foundation. Um, Little Angel Network has similar offerings to Missing Pieces Support Group where they support those who have encountered pregnancy loss. And then Harmony Grace Foundation specifically deals with uh, NICU um, baby loss experiences. Anyhow, uh, we have de- decided and committed to do hosting something like this annually to encourage those who have gone through this loss to come out, connect with our resources, um, learn more about who it is that we are and how we can help them as well as to honor the the loss that they are are grieving. Um, It's a physical way of expressing, um, you know, the, the, the loss and the heartache that you bear. Um, And you'll be surrounded by those who can, can be there for you to support you. So um, we also had an amazing opportunity to partner with uh, the Women's Hospital this year, who hosted something similar uh, last year on their site and noticed that one of our uh, partner charities was doing this. And they said, hey, we don't want to compete here. We want to join forces so that we can, uh, you know, grow as much community around uh, this opportunity to support those who have gone through this type of loss. So they are a sponsoring partner as well as um, participating uh, as a resource to help those who have gone through this loss. So we are excited um, not only for that partnership, but just the opportunity to make this kind of connection with those that we seek to serve. And that's going to happen again October 13th at Bell Park, which is in the Montrose area, uh, starting at 630 that day. Perfect. Do yeah. uh, the folks who want to participate need to register? Yes, they can go to 
any of uh, our partnering organizations' um, websites. Uh, click on the event and and sign up. We would love some pre-registration around this so that we know how many. Um, we're this year we're doing lanterns uh, that we're going to release across the waterfront at this park. Uh, so we can know how many of those to to plan for and prepare. It's just going to be a really unique, elevated experience this year. And, and uh, we want to um, draw as much of a crowd as we can for that. Fantastic. I will put uh, the links for that in the show notes. So if you're listening to the show and would like to register, all you have to do is point and click so you can go and register for that. So Jamila, you have mm-hmm. another big event coming up in October as well. Yes. So at the end of the month, but last Saturday, October 26th, Missing Pieces Support Group will be hosting our very first 5K. And this is to bring um, community uh, around uh, pregnancy loss awareness. So, you know, we're inviting those who have encountered loss to come out to see and be seen so that you know of our resource. We'll have vendors there that speak to mental health and wellness. And, and other resources that can help you navigate your j- grief journey. But we are also um, inviting the runner- running community to join us. Um, I've been going and attending running clubs to talk about our, our mission and our cause. And I've found so much support around, uh, you know, those in the running community who have experienced this or know someone who has closely experienced it. It's just been a beautiful thing, Tricia, to watch. Um, our mission resonate um, with this 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 group um, of of the running community that we're reaching out to. But don't feel like you have to be a professional runner to join us. Like we're also encouraging families, moms with strollers, everybody, come come join us, come run, come show your support, and um, br- help us bring some spotlight to pregnancy loss awareness because it's it's truly a traumatizing suffering in silence type of situation that should not exist in 2024. There are too many people that encounter this for us to not have access to the resources that we need to move forward in a positive manner. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me when that 5K is in October. Yes. So the 5K is Saturday, October 26th at 8.30 a.m. At McGregor Park, McGregor. Uh, we have a specific race uh, website set up for this, so I'll, I'll give you that link as well, Tricia. Um, you can find us on Run Sign Up, and there you can, you know, you can either sign up to to run or walk in the five k. You can sign up to volunteer. Um, if you're a business owner and would like to have a vendor booth, you can register there as well on that site. Wonderful. I will absolutely put that in the show notes so that folks can just point and click and get right to that registration site. And that's for everyone, everyone who wants to come out and support this your organization and these women who have gone through pregnancy loss. I would <laughs> love to- I have I've got one other thing to mention. I'm so Please. sorry. Wow. There is a virtual option to this 5K as well. So if you're not able to join us in person or if you're in another state, um, beginning October 1, first through uh, the day of the 5K, uh, you have the opportunity to participate with us virtually. You can gather a group of, of family members or your team from work and go out on a 3.1 uh, mile run or walk of your choosing. We'll send you a virtual 5K packet so you can, you know, post your pictures and your experience. Uh, along with the hashtags that we will look to find you and share your content online uh, with our community. So uh, don't be discouraged if you can't be in person. We'd love to have you as a virtual connection for our podcast. Ah, what a great idea. I love that. So I will definitely put all of those links in the show notes so that folks can get directly there. Um, Thank you. Tell me how, I, and you have some amazing events that are going on, whether it's supporting these women or the community supporting these women. But I know that there are other people in the community, maybe they can't make these events and they still want to support your organization. How can they get involved? Thank you for asking that question. 
you know, money is always a need of um, organizations like us. As we're nonprofit, but if you want a volunteer opportunity um, or a way to tie yourself to our organizations, we do now have things that you can, you know, incorporate in your own personal communities to help us. One of the biggest um, opportunities we have is a care package, uh, becoming a care package um, host for a drive where we collect materials for our care packages. So if, you know, you are a part of a, a group that um, wants to support us in that way, we can connect you to our events coordinator who will help coordinate an, an on-site um, care package drive where you can collect the items we need for the care packages and then also um, assemble the boxes uh, to help us in a very meaningful way because, it, I mean, we are few in numbers and I'm usually one of the people that is having to put those care packages together. So, uh, you know, the more hands we have on stuff like that, the better. And uh, it just um, helps us in such a, a physical and tangible way. So that's one of the ways uh, we're seeking support from our community. Um, now, with our, within our mental health and wellness community, uh, there is an opportunity to sponsor the care package materials that we have. Um, and with that sponsorship comes, uh, you know, a label that we place on the materials that you've sponsored within the care package um, so that um, those who go, go through the care package see you as a trusted resource um, of someone they can reach out to if that's the specific type of help that they need. Um, we will, of course, in exchange for your generous donation of sponsoring materials, um, include and recognize you on our online platforms, website, email marketing, um, and social media, um, and list you as a, as a, a trusted resource in that space. Um, and then for those, um, organizations that encounter, um, pregnancy loss, we are partnering with, uh, them to distribute our care packages. Um, for a nominal fee of ten dollars a box, um, where you know you can have these boxes on site when you have to deliver that awful news, and that person doesn't leave that place empty-handed without a next step resource. We of course are not expecting someone to go that's going through this to go through that box immediately, but you know when they're ready, it's there for them, and they can be. Be connected to our, our website, not only comforted by the items in the care package, but connected to our website for the additional resources like our um, support group program, uh, where they can be a part of that experience. Um, and, you know, look at our library uh, directory of resources so you can navigate your own grief journey. You know, support group isn't the, the best start for everyone. But we we can part, show you songs, books, podcasts, uh, therapist uh, recommendations uh, that might be a better fit for where you are in your journey. So, and you shared those some, are the ways to. That's go ahead. Thank you for sharing that. And you shared with me before we uh, started recording today that you've you're actually inviting men into these support groups now as well. So it's not just specifically for women who have gone through pregnancy loss, but for men as well. That's correct. So um, right now, our current structure is to host virtual and in-person support groups uh, specifically for women. Uh, the ther the licensed therapist that we connected with to create that curriculum for women um, exists and we have implemented and we are currently in an iteration of our support group that started a couple of weeks ago. Those ladies will actually get to um, be a part of our 5K. But, but um, we've been looking for ways to support men and as, you know, a, a board of directors of women and uh, you know, founders who are women, we can't speak to that need. Um, however, we have been able to connect uh, with someone in the health and wellness space who is a male who's experienced the stillbirth um, from the partner perspective. And um, he is working with um, our 
our lead, our, our liaison for uh, support group uh, facilitation, Dr. Ken Cooper, uh, to create some curriculum for me. And, uh, you know, it, it, we don't expect it to look like something that would help a woman, right? Men connect in different, totally different ways. And, uh, you know, his insight, you know, as a professional in that space, as well as being a lost dad, is going to be huge for us in figuring out how to, to support men that are going through this. Um, because they're not totally sure about, you know, not only how they're, what they're going through, but how to support their, their partner and what, what best to do. So, you know, it's, it's a two birds, one stone type of situation with supporting them and then showing them how to support uh, the partner in their life. So we're really excited about that. <laughs> uh, your organization is blossoming and it's so amazing to hear how much you've grown just since the last time we spoke a year ago. Yes. So for anyone who's interested in the events or learning more about Missing Pieces Support Group, you can go to missing missing pieces support group dot org to learn more about the organization oh. or even register for the events that we talked about today or volunteer uh to be a part of these care packages that Jamila was talking about. I really appreciate you being on the show and I'd also like to highlight that this is not the only thing that you do and you are such a giver and you support this community of women and men so wonderfully but you are also an entrepreneur and business owner. So there's something to be said about that uh, in running your own business as well as running this amazing organization. So thank you for all of the time and effort and heart that you put into everything that you do. Oh, Tricia, that truly means a lot. Woman to woman and entrepreneur to entrepreneur. Uh, but, you know, as I began to walk this nonprofit space, I've seen God essentially marry my world because I've tailored my offering to help and support nonprofits. So whenever I can connect with a nonprofit leader to help elevate um, our impacts in the community, I can also now help them with their marketing needs. And we're creating community amongst nonprofits in my for-profit business with the quarterly networking meetup where we invite them to, you know, come out and meet each other. We provide a learning and educational opportunity. And, uh, you know, we give back uh, to a nonprofit through a, a, a social media contest that we run online. So it's just come full circle for me. And I, I'm thankful to have made it to this point where I can watch the vision unfold. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to share before we close for today? Uh, no, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. Um, Looking forward to to meeting someone who resonates with this at you know either a five k or a, a candlelight visual or is an opportunity to support us through a care package drive. And um, yeah, thank you, Trisha. I really well, appreciate. I'm so it. glad that you're on the show with me today. I appreciate it and look forward to getting more people involved and getting the word out about your events and about your organization that does such important work for the community. Thank you so much. And that's all the time we have for today's show. Join us next time for another exciting episode of Houston Business Radio. Until then, stay tuned, stay inspired, and keep thriving in the Houston business community. Mm -hmm.